Farm, World Casino and Resort. What up, poker fam? Bearded Poker here. As mentioned in the title, this is where it all started for me. Windstar was the very first casino I ever visited, and this is also where I saw my very first poker room. So it's pretty cool that I'm able to come full circle and come back here as a poker vlogger. Enough of all that. Let's get into the hands. Alrighty, first hand of the vlog here with pocket queens, the ladies in the hijack position. Middle position decides to be the first to lead out and he leads out for $10. Low Jack makes the call. I decide I'm going to raise this up and I raise it to $35. Button makes the call, big blind calls, middle position calls, and so does the Low Jack. So we are now going five ways to the flop. The flop comes out king seven eight with two clubs. So not really the best board for our pocket queens, especially when both of our queens are red, so we don't hold a club. It checks all the way around, and I check this just for pot control. I've only been on the table for about 10 minutes. So I don't have a whole lot of information, but the information that I do have so far on the opponent to my left is that he is a loose, aggressive opponent. He's a very wild opponent. So I decided to check to him being that he is gonna be the aggressor and sure enough, he leads out for $25. All of the other opponents fold back to me and I go ahead and make the call and evaluate a turn. Hopefully we can improve. The turn does not help us and it comes in the form of the five of spades. I go ahead and check again, knowing that the opponent will lead out. I don't wanna make this pot bigger than it already is. And sure enough, he leads out for $25 again. So I go ahead and make the call. River does not come a good card. It's the four of spades. So now there's the obvious straight draw. Any six pretty much gets there. Flush draw does break out. So I decide I'm gonna go ahead and check to him and I'm pretty much going into a check call mode as long as it's a reasonable amount. However, while the river card was coming out, he shoves out of turn for his remaining stack and he had close to $300. So he definitely had me covered. Now I'm wondering what's going on here. The dealer kind of says, Actions on you, sir. This action stands. I did find that a little uh, irritating. You know, that kind of action is allowed. However, if I did have the nuts, I wouldn't be complaining about it, right? So that being said, I go into the tank. I'm thinking it through from the very beginning to the end. Obviously, this is not really the ideal situation. And there are a lot more hands that beat me than a lot more hands that I'm beating. Any king pretty much beats me. He could easily have king seven, king eight, based on the information that I mentioned earlier. He could even have 5-4. So I am tanking for a long time. I'm not really happy with this whole situation and how this hand turned out for me. And during that time that I'm thinking about it, my opponent says this out loud. I have a shirt. I have a shirt. If you can beat it, beat it. I have a shirt. I, I'm, I'm telling you because I, I, I did you wrong. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I have a shirt. You can beat it, beat it. Not going to lie. Kind of arrogant of the guy, huh? But... These are some of the things that you're going to have to deal with at the poker table. And that's kind of what I'm going through right now. He could easily have a straight and he could easily be telling the truth. I guess the guy felt bad. Sure. I'm not really believing it, but again, I don't put him on a straight. However, I do put him on some kind of king that is beating me. I just don't see myself winning here in this particular situation. So I decide on a fold and that's what I do. And he takes the pot down. So don't worry. We will play again against him later on. So we decide to add on for $50. We are now officially in the game for $250. And about 40 minutes or so pass by and we get dealt a beautiful hand. We get dealt pocket aces. What a great hand in a great position. We are on the button. Cutoff decides to raise it up to $12. That's not gonna be enough for me. I decided to re-raise it up to $32. Don't wanna make it too big. I do wanna get him to call. And we get good news when we get a call from the big blind who happens to be the same opponent who got us in the previous hand when we had queens and the cutoff decides to come along as well. So we're going to go three ways to a flop with close to $100 in the pot. The flop comes out king queen nine with two hearts. 
both big blind and the cutoff check to me. So with this particular board, it's a fairly coordinated and dynamic board, being that there is the possibility for straight draws and a flush draw as well. Two pair easily can come along, such as king queen or queen nine. So when they check to me, I decide that even if I were to make a pot size bet, for an example, I would be fairly short stacked going forward in the further streets. So the only thing that makes sense to me is a shove. And that being said, I want to charge the maximum for them to draw to their hand. And if I take this pot down right now, I'm okay with that. I decide on a shove, I go all in and the big blind, he tanks for a bit and decides on a call. Back to the cutoff, he's going back and forth, not sure what he wants to do. He looks visibly disgusted. He looks at me for a while, looks at his cards and then ends up exposing a queen and then folds. That's good to see. We don't have to worry about the queens now. Run it out. The turn comes the five of hearts. The river is the deuce of clubs. I show my aces and my opponent flips over ace king. We are good. We scoop this pot and we're happy to take it down, especially from this particular opponent who got us earlier. I felt like we were able to get a good amount of our money back and then some. So glad for that run out. On to the next hand. All right, next hand up, we have two red nines and we are in the under the gun position. I decide to take the betting lead and lead out for $12 and I get five callers. Under the gun one, middle position, hijack, cutoff, and big blind decide to come along as well. So we're going six ways to the flop. The flop comes out 10, five, four with two hearts. So not a bad board. We do have a pretty decent pair. And really the only thing we're losing to right now is a 10 or any over pairs, but we would have expected to have been re-raised if there were some over pairs that decided to come along. Big Blind decides to take the betting lead and he ships it all in for his remaining $35 stack. I tank for a bit. And as I was thinking about making the call, I noticed that everyone else behind me had already their chips in their hand, ready to put their bet out. So in this case, I decided to get out of the way and let them battle it out. So I fold and sure enough, under the gun one and middle position decide to make the call. They end up checking it all the way down was a jack of spades on the turn and a three of clubs on the river. The all in opponent shows six fives, so he has a pair of fives and under the gun one shows two pair with three five. So that river was good to him. He ended up getting the pot and scoops it all up. So good fold on my part. As you can tell, opponents play with pretty much any two cards here at Windstar. All right, next hand. All right, next hand of note, there are two hands that I really do not like to play, and that is Ace-10 offsuit and King-Jack offsuit. I usually don't do very well with these hands. Anyways, I'm on the button, and I do have Ace-10 offsuit. It does limp all the way to me, and I decide I'm gonna raise it up to $12, and I get five callers, including the small blind. I do have some notes on this particular opponent. One thing that I typed up here in my notes is that he's a very straightforward player. So if he leads out on the flop, he usually has something. Anyways, like I said, six ways to the flop. The flop comes out, queen eight five with two spades. Small blind, sure enough, leads out for $10 and he gets three callers. I decide I'm gonna fold. I only have ace high. I don't even have a spade. And again, small blind leading out here. I'm pretty sure I'm beat here right on the flop. Anyway, so I throw it away. And just to show you the run out, I don't remember exactly what the cards were, but I know that the turn was a brick and so was the river. Small blind shows down queen nine suited and he takes it down. We were right on a read with this particular opponent. Like I said, if he bets out on the flop, he usually has it. So good fold on us, on to the next hand. All right, we're dealt pocket queens again. And this time we're in the under the gun position. The opponent that I was talking about in the previous hand, he's involved in this hand. I raise it up to $15 and under the gun one, who happens to be the gentleman that we were talking about in the previous hand who plays fairly straightforward, he makes the call. So we're gonna go heads up with this individual. The flop comes out eight, eight, four with two clubs. I do have the queen of clubs. So I wanna check to my opponent and give him an opportunity to bluff at it or see what he does, see what kind of information I can get out of him. And he decides to check it through turn comes the three of clubs so now i definitely need to start betting out i don't want to give any of these lucky one club type hands a chance to draw on the river so i lead for 15 dollars, so roughly about half pot and he folds fairly quickly so miss out on some money there with a premium hand but 
Better to win than to lose, right? All right, on to the next hand. This is an interesting hand. I have ace two of diamonds in the small blind and it does limp six ways. I decide just to throw in my dollar. I have noticed with these suited connectors that uh, when I raise with these particular hands, I'm usually losing a lot of chips because uh, I'm just trying to chase the draw. So I just I decided to limp in. Eventually my one of my opponents will bluff at it. The flop comes out fairly well for us. Ace, eight, nine with two diamonds. So great flop for us. We flop the nut flush draw. We have top pair with a very bad kicker. We decide to check in flow, giving one of our opponents the opportunity to bluff at it. And then we'll raise. Middle position decides to be that opponent and leads out for $10. Hijack makes the call, folds back to me, and I raise it up to $20. Just a simple mid-click, and they both fold? Really? They fold to a mid-click. It was just 10 more dollars for them to call. Interesting. They both fold and we take it down. It's a little disappointing. I was really wanting to run this one out to see how it would have turned out. I think we could have easily gotten more money. Uh, maybe I should have just stuck with the call. We take the pot down onto the next hand. All right, final hand of the vlog. And this one's a really good hand. We got pocket fours and we are in the cutoff position. It does limp all the way to me and I decided to limp as well. So we're going six ways to the flop. The flop comes out seven, six, five, rainbow. So not too bad of a board for us. We do have an open ended straight draw. We got a pair. There's no flush draw we need to worry about. So we definitely have a lot of equity here. I decide after it checks to me to lead out for $10. And I get two callers from the button and from the small blind. So we're going three ways to the turn. And the turn comes the money card. It comes the three. I lead for $15 mainly because I want to get some money in this pot. We just hit our money card. And if our opponents maybe have some kind of two pair holding, we wanna charge them for that. But after I leave for $15, both the button and the small blind call fairly quickly. So then I start to think, what could our opponents possibly have that they're willing to call fairly quickly and not even think about it? And as I'm thinking it through, I begin to panic a little bit because now I'm thinking our opponents, or at least one of our opponents, has an eight and that would be a card that would easily come along because they are also open-ended but with a better card so now i'm worrying i'm panicking we're hoping for a clean river card so that way we can scoop this pot down in the session with a great pot and the river comes a freaking nine what in the world the worst card that could possibly come out for me if one of my opponents has an eight they just hit their money card they're in the lead i'm dead when small blind checks to me, I decide I'm gonna check back. Just wanna get the showdown, you know, not having to put any more money in this pot. But the button has other plans. He decides to lead out for $40. Man, does this scream strength. Not a good situation for me with a turn straight. And now I feel horrible with this hand on the river. All the confidence is out the door right now. And to make matters worse, small blind doesn't fold. He doesn't raise. He calls. Could possibly both my opponents have an eight? I know for sure one of them does. It doesn't matter either way because there's no way I'm gonna make this call. There's no way I'm gonna see it because I'm fairly confident that one of my opponents have the eight. I'm gonna end up seeing what they have anyways, regardless if I call or fold. So I decide on a fold. I'm so disappointed, I'm so sad of this run out. I fold my hand and both of my opponents show an eight. One has jack eight and the other has queen eight interesting run out for both of them this is why you raise this is why you don't limp for this exact reason because if i had raised they would not have been coming along but then again this is winstar this is how opponents play out here they play fast they play gambling they throw money in the pot and sometimes they hit their money card not too much later after that, we decide to collect our chips, rack up, and head to the cage. So we buy in the game for $200 originally, then topped off for another $50. So total buy-in was $250. We cash out for $476. That's a profit of $226. So not a bad run out for us. Not a bad session. This ends the vlog, everyone. If you could please like, comment down below, and subscribe, I'd truly appreciate it. For those of you who have recently subscribed to my channel, I want to say a special thank you to you guys. Thank y'all so much.
for taking that time and subscribing to my channel. It really means a ton. I love seeing that subscriber count go up. It definitely motivates me to keep pumping out vlogs. For those of you who are still watching my channel, but still haven't subscribed, please take the time and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I want you definitely to be a part of the Bearded Poker family, Bearded Poker community, and I think we can all grow together. Well, this is it, guys. Before I move on, I do want to say that at the, by the end of this year, I do want to be at 2,000 subscribers. I know that's a little challenging, but I think that's something that we can definitely do, and we can do that together. So please... Let's make that happen. By the end of the year, I want to be at 2,000 subscribers. Help your boy out. All righty. Bearded Poker out. Peace.